I think as I talk about my, my own life with the Lord in this season, it's a little harder to, to describe transitions. I, but I think the thing that, for me, as I look back on this time in my life, um, I think the thing that became central to me was just a deepening of what God had started with me in the first mansion. And I realized that loving, knowing, and living in the Trinity had to be absolutely the center of my life. That I, while God, I think, had been center, Jesus had been Lord, God had been the most important for many, many, many years, I realized that there was a kind of oneness that I longed for in Him. A kind of living in Him and He in me um, in, in a way that, that wasn't spiritual and regular, that it wasn't devotions and work, that somehow parts of my life had uh, to come together, that, uh, that they had to become one in Him, that, that somehow all of my life, every bit of it had to be about my Lord, my Savior, my God, this one in whom this passion and this love was beginning to grow. My, my prayer times began to shift, I, th I think, even further. And as, I, as I'd enter into prayer time, again, it used to be, as I said, with the Scripture and, and uh, a couple insights and so on, uh, more and more, I just longed to be with Him. Now, I spent, continued to spend time in the Word. I continued to minister in my church and teach Scriptures and, and, and Bible study class. But, but prayer time, prayer time became more and more still time, quiet time. I use a prayer shawl. Uh, it started a long time ago that it helps me. I'm such a distracted person that I, I need things that help me focus on God. And I have these tassels on the end of the prayer shawl. And, and uh, so the first one is uh, Charlotte and my wife. And the second one is uh, Mark, my oldest son. And, and so on it goes. And, and I would uh, grab that tassel on the prayer shawl and I'd say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and I'd begin to pray intercessions for them and begin to hear the Holy Spirit say, shh, shh. And so I just hold that tassel and hold my wife before the Lord and trust His love. Just trust His love. He knows. He understands. He loves more than I can imagine. I don't need to tell him. I just need to be still. My ministry began to shift in different ways as well. And again, this loving Jesus in people uh, deepened. And, and I began to realize that not only did I love Jesus, other people with the love of Jesus, but that I could meet him there. And that my interaction with others, whether it was a person that I was coaching or mentoring or whether it was a clerk uh, at the grocery store or um, the mechanic at the, at, at the Ford dealer, uh, that I could enter into that space with Jesus and with this person and just be attentive to what God wanted to do. I think for a major part of my life, I, I felt that, that witnessing was the, the most important thing, that somehow sharing the gospel, how am I going to get a, an opportunity to share the good news of Jesus Christ? And I began to realize, this may sound presumptuous, but I am the good news of Jesus Christ. That the creator of the universe, the Lord of all creation, is here with me and with them. And all we have to do is be here together. And if there's something to be talked about or shared or spoken, um, that he'll do it. He'll bring it up. I just need to be. 
the space of quiet began to increase in my prayer times. And the need to, to verbalize, I still have my intercessions in this time, but the need to verbalize things had begun to quiet down. And it's as if God had been speaking to me all these years in my language and inviting me to speak back to him in his. But now in this season, he was saying, Tom, Speak to me in the language of your heart. Shh. In Romans it says the Holy Spirit pleads and prays the groanings and longings too deep for words. And I began to realize that prayer was this communion of the Holy Spirit with the Spirit of God. And that while sometimes my words would enter in, most of the time I just needed to allow and to be attentive. And sometimes things would bubble to the surface or insights or words from God. But more and more it was just this being with Him. The season of my life uh, also had its own tumultuousness. The more and more God called me into the intimacy of the Trinity, uh, the more I was confronted by my own inability to really love and to be loved. And the wounds in my own past, the wounds in my upbringing that I thought had pretty well been healed and, and put in order and settled uh, began to raise up in me. And I began to find myself in many times a little fearful of this awesome presence and this awesome intimacy. God wanted more of me than I felt comfortable giving. He was invading a personal space that I had enjoyed my own protection myself. And I was uncomfortable. Issues with my father growing up, issues with my mom, sins that I had known were forgiven and let go of years ago began to become more present to me. And I realized that there was an entering into God for which I was nowhere near ready. And that the Holy Spirit had surgery after surgery after surgery to accomplish with me before I was free to really live in his light and fully in his love. I think another difficulty for me in, in this season of my, of my journey with God is, is this awareness of my inability to really express my love for God in my love for other people. Yeah, I think it happens in two ways for me. One is that, that as I became more and more aware of how passionately God loves the world and the people around me and the lost and the poor and uh, the people who are suffering and the people who are clueless about God, I, I realized, Lord, how do I, how do I even make a dent? How do I respond to you? It, is it became more and more aware of this world spiraling out of control and my absolute helplessness to do anything about it. And I also became more and more aware of my sinfulness. Now you'd think by now, you'd think by now that after all God has done for me and all the ways that he's shown himself to me and loved me unconditionally, that I'd have begun to get it together a little bit. But I'm aware that there's a dual motive in everything I do. The scripture stuck out to me. It, it leaped at me one day. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall... There's nothing pure in me. 
There's nothing pure in me. And so it adds to me a frustration. Lord, can I really love you in the way that you've invited me to do? But Jesus seemed to just respond to me. Tom, just follow me. And I realized that as I lived with him, really in the quietness of my prayer closet, in the solitude of my retreats, and in the daily service with Jesus, that he invited me deeper and deeper into the mystery of his relationship. A sinner following Jesus, stumbling along, clueless about where he was going. I remember the days when I thought I understood. But more and more, it's becoming okay.